Okay, continuing. Remember that a rate is a ratio that quant compares quantities of different units, for instance, miles per hour, feet per second, and usually we can indicate that fraction bar with the per. So miles per hour could be written as miles over hours, and feet per second could be written, written as feet over seconds. Okay, so I want to consider a situation here. There are two characters in this story. One of them is named Centipede, haha, and the second one is Melody Bug, but she goes by Lady, so Ladybug. They travel between the elm tree and the rose bush. The first time they started from the elm tree, the graph shows their progress. How fast were they moving? Well, so first of all, qualitatively, who's moving faster? And you can see that Sen's distance is changing faster than Melody's distance. So Sen is moving faster. Now let's try to quantify that. How quickly is Sen moving? Well, Sen's distance goes up three feet every time Sen's time increases by one minute. That's a rise and a run, or a slope of three over one. So that would be three feet per one minute is equal to three feet per minute and that would be Sen's speed. Let's take a look at Melody's speed. Melody's moving a little slower. I'm going to try to find whole numbers that indicate Melody's speed. Melody's distance is going up by 2 every time her time goes over by 4. Her distance increases by 2 every time time increases by 4. So Melody's slope, or rate of change, is 4 feet per, I'm sorry, made a mistake there. That's 2 feet is the vertical change, divided by 4 minutes. And so if we reduce that fraction, that is 1 half of a foot per minute. So that's melody speed. In part B, they're on a different trip. <clears throat> Did their speeds change this time? We're looking at how quickly each line is rising or running. The answer is no. They still have the same slope. <coughs> what did change? If you notice, they're starting in different positions. Sen started where? If we look at the graph, at the beginning, Sen started one foot from the elm tree. Melody started where? Gosh, she got a significant head start on this one. She started, it looks like, six feet from the elm tree. The next graph shows their progress on their third trip. Did their speeds change? No, it still looks like Melody's graph is not so steep and Sen's is still steeper. What changed this time? Well, two things. Sen didn't change. He still started at one foot from the elm tree. Melody started eight feet 
from the elm tree this time. But what's different about, the, about her movement this time? That's right, her distance is decreasing. So this time, she moved toward the elm tree. And how would we quantify that with her slope? That is to say, her slope is negative. Okay, so what would Melody's graph look like? And this is strictly qualitative. If she were moving slowly to, to the tree. Remember, the vertical axis is the distance from the tree. So if she's moving toward the tree, her distance will get smaller over time. If she were moving quickly toward the tree, how could we describe her slope? If she's moving more quickly, she's going to get to the tree sooner, so the slope will be steeper. If she were moving slowly from the tree, then her distance would be increasing, but the slope would not be very large or very steep. What if she were not moving at all? Suppose she started here at six feet away from the elm tree, then she'd stay at six feet away from the elm tree. So her graph would look like that, a horizontal line. All right, in E, Sen's graph is given, and this one looks a little bit differently. What's happening with Sen this time? Well, it seems like there are three separate movements that are going on here. I'm just going to divide up the graph into pieces. From t equals 0 to t equals 2, Sen moves which direction? His distance is getting greater, so that means he's moving away from the elm tree. At a rate of, and if we look at the slope of Sen's movement there, his distance is changing two units for every time changing one unit, so that would be 2 over 1, or 2 feet per minute. So that's one set of movement. And then for another time interval, and that would be between t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 5. What's happening with Sen right there? Well, if you notice over that time period, Sen's distance doesn't change at all. Sen's distance remains 5. So Sen was not moving. And then our last interval, which is between 5 and 10, so from t equals 5 to t equals 10, Sen is moving again, but this time his distance is decreasing over time. So Sen is moving which direction? Toward the elm tree. And Sen moved at a rate of, if you think about his movement during this time period, his distance is going down one, 
every time his time goes up by one. So he's moving toward the elm tree at one over one, which equals one foot per minute. So three different types of movement in that graph. Okay, here is another graph that we haven't yet seen. And this graph has a graph of a vertical line. And there's a distance from the elm tree and time in minutes. Now, I hope that there should be something that's striking about this graph. I'm going to plot two points that are on this graph. I want you to think about what those two points represent. So for this first point, that means at t is equal to three minutes, I guess this is sen, is how far from the tree. Sen is two feet from the tree. Okay, let's take a look at our second point. The second point says at what time, that's on the horizontal axis, looks like t is equal to three minutes again. Sen is how far from the tree? This time, sen is, it looks like, six feet from the tree. Take a moment and read those two statements. At t equals three minutes, sen is two feet from the tree. At t equals three minutes, sen is six feet from the tree. Can sen actually be in two different places at once? You're right, that doesn't make sense. If this doesn't make sense, what that means is we don't have a slope, or the slope is undefined. So whenever we have a vertical line, the slope will be undefined. On the next chain, on the next page, we want to describe the rate of change in each graph. So we're going to quantify it. The next graph has water in a tank measured in gallons, and time is measured in hours. So if we calculate a slope using two points, and you can pick any two points on the graph, we need a rise and a run. Well, what do you notice about the amount of water in the tank over time? It is decreasing. So that means that we have a negative rate of change. So if I think about my rate of change rise over run, that would be negative 3 over 1. And what are the three things measured in? The vertical change is measured in gallons. And the 1 is measured in hours. So that means negative 3 gallons per hour. We have the value of the rate of change, which is negative 3. And then we have the units of the rate of change, which are gallons per hour. Every slope will have units that will be in the form of a rate. In the second picture, we have air in a balloon measured in cubic feet, and we have time in seconds on the horizontal axis. If we pick any two points on the graph, what I can notice about those two points is that there is a zero rise. So a zero is the vertical change, and that's measured in cubic feet. And then the horizontal change between those two points that I noticed is four seconds. Zero divided by four is zero. And the units of the rate of change are cubic feet per second. Zero.
zero is going to be our rate of change if something is not changing at all. In the third graph in C, the, if I pick any two points, what I can notice is that the rise is one, and then the run is three. That's going to be a positive number because as I go from one point to the next, I'm going to the right and up, which are positive directions. So one over three, the one or the rise was measured in feet per minute. And then the run or the horizontal change was measured in seconds. So our rate of change has a value equal to one third. And then the units of this rate of change are feet per minute per second. Those are kind of weird units that you may not have seen before. These are actually units of what's called acceleration, which is a measure of how quickly velocity changes. In the last graph, if I pick two points here, what I'm going to notice is that there's a vertical change of three. And the vertical change of three is measured in inches. There's a horizontal change of zero, and that's measured in years. Three divided by zero is undefined. So there really is no rate to discuss here. That's an impossibility. What this is saying is, if we think about someone's, the years being someone's age, when someone is five years old, they are both four inches tall and eight inches tall. Well, maybe this doesn't have anything to do with a, a human's height. Maybe it's the height of a plant. But you see that at, four, at five years, the height can't be two different things. So this graph actually doesn't make sense in terms of something changing. So there's no rate to discuss in that graph. OK, so in each of these graphs, we're going to find a unit rate of change. So for this one, I'm going to look at the change in volume. Volume is measured on the vertical axis measured in cubic feet. And so the change in volume in six seconds is, let's see, over six seconds, My volume changed by minus three because the volume went down over a period of six seconds. So my unit rate will be three, negative three cubic feet over six seconds, which equals negative one half cubic feet per second. In the second graph, we have distance in miles on the vertical axis and time in hours on the horizontal axis. Over a period of 10 hours, which is that right there, the distance changed by how much? Looks like the distance went up one, two, three, four, five, six. So that would be six miles. My unit rate would be six miles per 10 hours which equals six tenths reduces to three fifths miles per hour. In C, we are interested in the change in height over four years. So over a time period of four years, the height changed not at all. So that would be measured in feet. The change in height would be zero feet. Our unit rate would be zero feet divided by four years. Zero divided by four is zero, and the units of the rate would be feet per year. So zero feet per year, which is basically to say something is not growing. And that concludes our lesson. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.